and F5 Nip NATO is coming to rip your nips off. SJB is here to absolutely blow you away. We are about to go for the highest round ever achieved on Chimps Mode, and that is so ridiculous that we're going to start on round 160. Whew. Hot diggity dog. This is actually a few rounds short of my previous highest ever Chimps record before I got better and better and even better. Now we're running into the 200s, but we cannot break the 200, the, the low 200 barrier. It just seems too insurpassable until now. There are new changes to Bloons Tower Defense 6 that are giving us a huge advantage on chimps mode and late game chimps. So let's talk about our strategy really quickly, the plan really quickly, and then we're just gonna jump hopefully huge bounds of rounds here and hopefully get to the goal round 300. So what the heck is going on here? And why do I have so much money saved up? And what am I gonna do with it all? And how are you still alive on chips mode at this point? Well, it's all coming down to a perma brood master bomber. I used to do a druid strategy where I used to use uh, really crazy Avatar of Wrath and Superstorm combos, but Superstorm is really, really expensive, 70K. Avatar of Wrath is also pretty expensive, about 50K, plus the other druids that you need to get that going. It's just expensive. So I was able to do something kind of weird. If you get a Master Bomber, he's got a lot of stunning power. And if you actually get a 20 times Shinobified Master Bomber, who's also permabrewed with all the ninjas around him, he gets an extreme amount of stunning power, and his only direct weakness is going to be Bad Balloons. And that's where Azili comes in. Azili is surprisingly good against Bad Balloons. So the basic strategy to get started in here is get a bunch of Shinobis, try to get them as cheaply as you possibly can by using Monkey Commerce times 2, fly them into position with your permabrew in action. Now I have a full-on permabrewed army of Shinobis, all set to go here, round 164. Now, you're going to notice on the left side of the screen here, we've got the perma over here next to my stun avatar. Doesn't really matter. Not building anything. But I've also got a random carpet of spikes. This is probably a weird tower. Like, it's not bad against things, but it's okay. It's okay against late game stuff, but like, as far as money's concerned, you should not be spending $50,000 on this guy. Spend the money on the avatar of wrath or something, dude. It's just going to be so much more efficient. But he's got a purpose. So does this guy. It's all about the Sun Temple. Now, if you guys seen my recent short where it shows how to make uh, extra money in chimps mode, it is indeed possible to make extra money in chimps mode. And to make that happen, all you need to do is get a Sun Temple with support. And I don't even remember the exact amount of money you need to spend on support, but I think it's something like $5,000. It's not even that much to make extra cash on chimps mode. But I want to go for the full-on support temple so everything just gets buffed and to the absolute extreme here. So definitely want to put $50,000 worth of uh, spike factories into our sun temple here. But now I've got to decide what else I want to get inside of my sun temple. It's a very difficult decision for me. Now keep in mind the original OG sun temple here is basically going to have three out of four tower types that I can put inside of him up to a max of $50,000. But I don't need a full $50,000. There's a range of upgrades based on um, how much money you spend that ranges from literally like $100 or $1,000 or something like that all the way up to that $50,000 thing. And every single little increment that you're going to build is going to give you that extra power. So right now what I'm doing is I'm seeing how long I can survive while still being able to afford a Sun Temple here. And all I want to do is I want to buy more Magic Towers or I want to buy more Primary Towers. Put them inside of the range of my temple before I officially buy this guy because I'm probably only going to get one of them. All right, let's show you guys around here before I'm going to officially buy my temple. So this is what we're experiencing at this point in the game with our $108,000 saved up with a couple decent tower choices uh, to kind of get us to getting a temple that is also good. So you should note that I did end up going for... Uh, ooh, hopefully we're going to beat this round. It's definitely... Again, it's getting tough here. But I ended up with a tax zone, which is approximately a little over $25,000 for primary monkeys. I ended up with a Grand Sabatois, which obviously is very helpful in just kind of keeping us going in here for a little while. And also costs just over $25,000. It's a little closer to thirty, dollars actually. We're going to move up. Our... Oh, dang. All right, we're going to have to work on this a little bit before I get to you guys. All right, looks like it did go pretty well here. And it's finally time. So we got our three, four, th three out of four uh, types of monkeys here, 50K, 25, and 25, which uh, there's basically three, there's a bunch of different steps, but one of the steps is 50,000, and the next step down is 25 to 50,000. So you don't want to go crazy and spend 49,000 or 48,000 or 43,000. It doesn't help at all. Compared to 25, it's the exact same as 47, until you reach that threshold. So it's finally time. 
Here we go. We're going to go Sun Temple right here. I'm ready for it. Let's do it. You know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait just in case I, like, can't beat the next round or something like that. And I, I just need to not do this and figure out what I'm going to do. Here it is. Sun Temple. Let's go, baby. Whoop. All right, so now what I'm going to do with this, guys, I am going to be going for the super range, and I'm going to be going for the epic range. We're also going to refly in our Permabrew to Permabrew this guy, and now the next step here is to start getting everybody overclocked. We want to Ultra Boost everybody up to 10 times over here so we can actually start to survive, but to make that happen, we need a lot of money. Hopefully, this guy's going to help with that. Hopefully, he's going to make us an extra 50% of cash, but only for everything that gets popped in our range here, and that's why I decided to go for the range, and that's why I'm also going to go for a random village over here. All right, let's see what happens, man. See if we can survive this. All right, let's perma brew this buddy, and uh, let's see if this is gonna be a help here. So, oh, he's got a lot of pops actually. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, of course, he's gonna be more powerful than my sun avatar. I, I don't know the level of of power though, specifically against bad balloons. Like, I don't know if this is gonna be easy now, or if it's gonna be difficult now, or what the deal is. Maybe we'll just kill more random balloons. Uh, with this guy, and that'll allow my ninjas to actually focus on the bad blooms and, and stuff. That could work out as well. But as of as we speak, we are still not unstoppable. This is still a tough run. We have to use all of our abilities the entire game here, and still hopefully, hope that we just take these guys down eventually. Look at this. No, just utter chaos, man. Utter chaos. I have not had any major issues so far, but it's definitely active gameplay. When I say active gameplay, that means every single round we're using all of these abilities as much as I possibly can, and we're still getting bats kind of near the end of the map. But it's about to change a little bit because we just got Ultra Boost! So the cool thing about Ultra Boost is we can Ultra Boost guys ten times. Um... And we can do that for every single tower that we have, which means we'll never run out of something to Ultra Boost. What's weirder, though, is that you can only Ultra Boost three times per round. Um, right now, that doesn't seem to matter too much, because the temple is pretty powerful at dealing with these balloons on the inside. Uh, but later on, as we get a little bit uh, weaker against the balloons, basically, we will probably be able to use these guys. Oh my god, what did I just boost? I got some boost in Azili now, which isn't the end of the world. You know, we'll, we'll Ultra Boost here, too. Uh, but... <laughs> But, um, I want to do this guy ten times and this guy ten times first, and then everybody else is kind of just second nature to that. But it does show you that it does take a really, really long time to make this all happen, because at most, if we could do three per round, if we were able to max out and get three per round every single time, we get to max out about three towers every ten rounds. Well, the way the Moab Hex works is it's actually based on a percentage of damage, and that's why it ends up being such a good late game, uh... Ability. So because you do a percentage of damage, you can use towers like Ice, Glue, and Snipers to get you that huge increase in bonus damage based as a percentage, rather than based on uh, just kind of output. That's why as these blooms get stronger and stronger with more and more health, that's going to matter more and more for us. So, uh, uh, obviously it's important to get that. Now, in addition, making our ability come back faster with a submarine, wink at a wink, is another great way. Uh to just get bonus damage on these bats. And that's gonna be what kills us. Not the Oh My Gods, not the Moabs, not the DDTs. It's gonna be a bad balloon that's eventually gonna sneak through our defense. And of course, it's gonna be what kills us. It's just, it's like a fact of life, all right? Just just deal with it. Um, but it's nice now that my uh, temple exists because now everything's cheaper. So now if I wanted to buy, for example, a Energizer sub, that's usually about 34 grand. Now it's 27 grand. That's a pretty good bonus. I'll take it. But I gotta be sort of particular about how I put my towers down because uh, I can't move a lot of things, and once I build it, I can't sell it. So it's like, oh crap, you can't screw this up, Chris. You really got to do a good job here. Um, and what I want to do is I do want to end up going for a long-term plan here. Aircraft carrier. And I was thinking of putting um, my Super Riddle on there, right in the middle of the map. And then probably something like a Tax Zone. Probably. I can't decide for sure, but having a Tax Zone in the middle of the map might not be all powerful, but every little bit of damage is going to matter here in the long term, so I, I feel like I, I should go for it. But again, that's a little later on, but for right now, I will put down my boat, and I think this will be a pretty good spot here if I put him right next to my temple. Um, get the boost off of that guy and everything, so, yeah. Alright. Let's keep flowing, boys. Keep flowing. So around 200 is coming up here. This is usually a pretty difficult thing to do. Um, but I'm hoping with Azili's abilities here, we're going to be okay, even against reinforced bad balloons. But this is the point where things can get wild. These are now rounds that every single round can have reinforced bad balloons coming out against us. And that's pretty scary. 
the good news is we do have our, our carrier flagship here. I ended up with a embrittlement so far, eventually going to turn into a super brittle in range of a primary mentoring village, which gives us even more range on top of that. Seems kind of funky to talk about that, but I think it's actually a pretty important deal here because you just saw around 200 get popped and not near the end of the screen. We still had some room to work with here. It's kind of exciting, man. It means we could still probably go a uh, decent distance further, hopefully. Round 210. I know at this point you guys are probably a little, uh, a little curious about pop counts. So to start you guys off, my Sun Temple, which by far the most expensive tower, definitely a support tower at this point though, 83 million. All right, fair enough. Cool, cool, cool. Master Bomber, two, oh, two, 202 million pops. Pretty absurd. Azili, 124 million. So currently our Master Bomber is still on the top right now. Kind of intriguing, except, ooh, only 26 mil. But that is going to change soon. Um, this guy is going to start to take over a little more than what he currently is, but I don't know if he's going to catch up. You know, I mean, these balloons are already pretty beef-tastic. But still, no major issues. I've had to retry a couple rounds a couple times, but nothing nothing big or problematic yet. But only in the 210s. We still have another, what, 39 rounds to go before we hit my record, so... So got a lot of work to do. Okay, this is the first round that we're actually having a significant amount of trouble with. 214. We've got a lot of bads coming out. Um, I'm trying to time my glue and my abilities all together here. I also have only $13,000 to work with, so it's not like I can just build a bunch of random crap over here. But what I really wanted to do was start to get my homeland defense ready. Uh, and I honestly, I probably should have bought this guy earlier, but I don't even have a call to arms yet. But I can't afford it this round, but kind of too late. And again, it's chimp, so I can't just sell something or something like that. So we are sadly kind of stuck with what we got here, at least for now. Um, I'm trying to boost some of my best towers right now. But you can see this isn't even the problem. This bad's going to get popped. This bad's going to get popped. We're going to have three bads that we're still going to have to somehow magically take down near the end of the map here with only one ability on Azili. And also, money is kind of weird because Called Arms is about to come into existence. Called Arms has gotten, this has gotten. We can boost the Master Bomber again. And I don't want to use any of these abilities here, but we can use the glue on top of that and hope that maybe, just maybe, these bads will go down eventually. Called Arms, in the end, one of them. I don't even know if there's one or two there, man. There's just too much beef. This is a problem. I'm gonna have to work on this for a while. Alrighty, friends, we're about to jump into 225. Definitely getting some lag action going on in here. And the new big change here is we're about to unlock Avatar of Wrath. Um, Sarcastically, uh, it's still very difficult to time things, and sometimes I do have to play rounds twice because uh, basically you have to time this sabotage ability to get half health on your bads. Uh, and get as many bads in that half health range as you possibly can. Uh, and then you still are going to have to use this thing uh, pretty accurately. But then on top of that, you got to try to make it. So Zone My Gods are going to be alive at the end of the game. So you might not want to use Homeland Defense or Glue. Because you'll pop too many random Zone My Gods, BFBs and stuff like that. Um, because you want to have both of these abilities available at the next round. It's not perfect. And there are times where I have messed up. But so far it has not caused us to lose. But I could totally see how... Having too much temple popping power could actually be kind of a bad thing. I just need more stunnage is really what I need. Um, and I don't think that I'm going to be able to make that happen anymore. But, you know, it is what it is. You can see we're still moving on in the world, my friends. Still moving up in the world. Uh, another 23 rounds until I'm at my current world record. But I don't know if we're going to make it past that, dude. This is, this is rough. Every single round could kill us. You can see how many bats are on the, on the screen here. It's not like there's just a few here and there. They're like, they're actually overwhelming us. Two, three, four, five, six of them on the screen right now. Uh, the good news is, money is coming in decently well. Um, I don't know if it's actually truly 50% more. Definitely feels like I'm making extra cash on this chips mode game, so I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, and I guess I gotta decide what I wanna build next, because so far I built everything that I normally build. Now we gotta decide if I wanna go for a Superstorm, which is $70,000! Extremely, extremely pricey. This is where it's tricky though. Like, if I use this Moab Hex ability, yes, I will kill the bads, but then I will not have this, le uh, I will kill these guys before it's ready. So sometimes it's best just to wait it out or use something like a Homeland Defense instead. See if you just take it down or 
purposefully lose. Just say, screw it. I don't want to screw this up for the next round. I'd rather replay around 226 than lose at around 227 and screw everything up forever. And luckily for us, this time around, it does work out. And as long as I switch this guy to first, we should be okay on round. <gasps> We're not! All right, guys, we currently broke 230 at this point. 17 more rounds to go for my current record to be uh, tied, not beaten. Uh, and 250. If we actually made it to 250, that would be my current record. So, uh, I don't know. I, 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 any round could really be the final round at this point. It, it is a little bit about luck because I believe past round 140, rounds become randomized. Um, and this affects your late game gameplay a lot. Not only with just random bads deciding that they want to be ridiculously difficult for no reason, kind of out of nowhere, but also because the amount of money that you make can actually be less on one run compared to another run. Um, if you actually like math out how much money somebody's going to end up with at this point in the game, adding everything up together, they could have more stuff than me. Probably not by a significant amount because the law of averages basically says that if everything's random, with enough randomness, eventually it'll kind of even out, right? I mean, kind of, yeah. I don't know if that's a real thing. I just kind of made it up, but it sounds good. So let's let's go with it. We are currently on round 240. We're 10 rounds away from my my current record. Um, it's getting pretty wild. I mean, uh, it's probably like 50-50 of -50 whether or not we're going to beat each round without me restarting. Uh, but, but I have been making it without too many major issues. And I know that I keep saying stuff like that, like too many issues, but it's one of those things where it's like, you're going to run into a lot of issues. It's just, do you get roadblocked? Do you actually get fully on, full on stymied here? Or is it just a little bit of a problem to deal with? And even though it takes an extra five minutes to actually go back and play the round a couple more times, I'd rather do that than have to restart and play another three to four hours of gameplay. That would suck. Uh, so, so here we are, 240. Feeling decent. I've also got $46,000 saved up at this point, so I can actually make some plays happen if it comes down to it. Uh, one of the weirdest things, though, is you can definitely tell sometimes I don't sabo right. I don't sabo before the first reinforced uh, bad, and sometimes that makes it so I almost automatically have to restart here. And this time we've got three reinforced bads on the screen right now. Just right now. As far as overclocks go, I've already got well, both of my main druids ten times overclocked, so I've been just randomly overclocking ninjas here, whatever the heck they want to be. Got a couple, like, four times, two times, one times, just kind of random what I ended up with. I also boosted my villages just a little bit over here, try to get a little bit more range out of everything. And the main thing, though, is just to try to make sure that I have this ability and this ability at the start of the next round. If I make that happen, I know for a fact that I did not screw up. But again, it's tough. It's very, very difficult to pull that off. Specifically when you have to watch a bad balloon in like the bottom-ish vicinity over here and you have to just say, screw it, I have to let you go through. I screwed up with my timings and I have to let you go through though I could kill you because I need you for the next round. Uh, again, it doesn't happen every single round or anything like that, but there's rounds here and there which are just kind of annoying that I have to deal with that, but it is something you have to do. $52,000 saved up at this point though. That's pretty sweet. I can't decide what to go with next though. Um, in my other run what I decided to do and what seemed like the best DPS per DPS per second and but oh crap oh crap damage per second um tower was actually just more shinobis kind of spamming more shinobis in range of the other shinobis and maybe even just going grandmaster ninja or something like that could be a reasonable way to play this game all right I know I screwed up I'm just gonna restart this one because this is just too chaotic oh baby oh baby this is the round that I could not beat in my last runs. Round 249. Ugh. Again, the rounds should be random, so it should not be this round in particular that sucks major balls. But maybe it still does. Maybe it's just a round that can't be completed. Uh, there's definitely a lot of bads coming out right now, and a lot of reinforced bads, which makes it even worse for us. Ooh, there's still more coming out! And I'm also ready to buy a flying fortress look at that timing this flying fortress dude if this guy's gonna carry us through the game this is gonna be insanity now it should be noted that i got him 10 times overclocked he oh he's not perma brood let's get him perma brood where's my uh i think he's over here somewhere yeah yeah yeah, yeah. perma brew that mofo perma brew and get azili's ability going here all right we got four more bats to take now five more bats to take down um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna overclock random stuff still. We're gonna use the glue. I'm not gonna homeland defense, though. I want to save that, if possible. Because I don't want to just beat round 249. I want to keep on going. But, can we? Oh, crap. 
Oh crap, that's still a lot of bads. But we got them! They all, I think all two or three of them popped at the same time there. Dang, dude! And that is going to give us a round 250 with all of our abilities ready to go at the start of this round. Absolutely amazing. All right, man. I'm pumped. Woo! 250! All right, what is special about 250? Is there anything extra difficult about it or anything like that? Um, so far, it looks like a regular round. Just kind of random spaced bads all over the place. No reinforced ones yet, which is always good. You see reinforced bats, not an automatic death or anything like that. Uh, Azili still pretty powerful against him. But weirdly, reinforced bats in the middle of things are more difficult than when they start off coming out against you. Um, also, bats that come out in front of reinforced bats are weird because when you use Azili's ability, it's going to jump to the reinforced bat in particular. So that reinforced bat might not actually be what's killing you, but it is what's killing you. Does that make sense? The reinforced bat will be on the screen, but it's tanking Azili's uh ability here, and then other bads randomly end up sneaking through. Luckily for us, 250 does not seem to be too bad, and we're gonna push on through for the new Super John Bombo Chimps World Record! Woo! Alright! And now the question becomes, how deep does the rabbit hole go? We just broke into the 260s, and I just want to show you guys what 260 looks like when I don't use any of my abilities. Every single round in the 250s, I think except for one, I had to play more than once. And 254, I had to play like 20 times because it was just absolutely absurd. So we're getting down to the point where like every single round is taking us like five minutes to play through these. And I'm still losing on top of it. But the crazy part is, is that some of the bads I af actually have to pop manually. I'm not just using Azili. I mean, look at these bads. I mean, this has been a bad that has existed the entire time, basically. And it's almost dead, but still not quite there. It's just kind of crazy to like watch that actually unfold like that. Wow, we are currently on round 270. And believe it or not, for some reason, the 60s to 70s were 60 to 70 was easier than the 50 to 60 for some reason. And I didn't change that much about my defense, or at least it doesn't make as much sense as I thought it would. Um, I've been overclocking more things, so obviously that's been helping me out a little bit. But as far as towers are, are, are going, uh, the only thing that I built was the Dark Champion. And he's only got 11 million pops, so it's not like he's really breaking the bank for me or something like that. Uh, well, actually, no, he is kind of breaking the bank. He's really expensive. Uh, but the good news is, is that he's getting some pops for the amount of money we're spending on him. But comparing him to some of our other towers here is actually kind of funny, because, like, this is a pretty cheap tower. 50 million. Been around for a longer time, obviously, but just shows you what you can get for even $20,000. This guy, Flying Fortress, almost 200 million at this point. Um, some of the other guys that, like, might not be necessarily poppers that are still doing quite a bit of pops are this Ruid here, 43 million. Um, my Avatar of Wrath at 151 mil. This guy... Oh, I never got the Grandmaster Ninja. Maybe I will get him. For some reason, I thought I already bought a Grandmaster. But all right. Uh, and then my Master Bomber as well. Give me one second here. We're on 271 now. All right, let's go, let's go. Uh, Master Bomber is at a ridiculous... Oh, he's about to, about to break 500 million pops. I'd like to have $500 million right now. That would be pretty sweet. Absolutely super mega sweet, to be honest with you. Oh, it's going to happen. Let's watch it. Oh, yeah. All right, come on, six. And you can just see how ridiculous this is going. Uh, I mean, it's just, I guess it's a little bit slow. It's random how it just kind of jumps up really fast like that. But bam, 500 million, half a billion pops. Wow. If you ever actually wanted to look at big numbers and like see how hard it is to get big numbers to happen, like when somebody has a billion dollars, um, this, this is all you got to do is come here, check this out. Play blue, say play some balloons to help you understand big numbers, uh, <laughs> because 500, 500 million is insane as far as pops go. But it's still just kind of a drop in the bucket as far as a billion is concerned. Because guess what? <gasps> no, only two hundred thirty million. But wait, wait, wait. There's one more. Five hundred and eighty-eight million pops here for our good friend Azili. All right, as far as abilities go, looks like we're doing good. I gotta watch myself because I had one round in the two fifties. Uh, where I did not have both of my abilities back right at the very beginning of the next round. And uh, it screwed me over. I had to try it like 20 times. I had to spend all of my money. And actually, I think this is what I, when I had to actually build my Dark Champion to make that happen. But any which way, uh, we're still alive. We're still kicking. 
Uh, obviously, round 300 will be no matter what my final round. I hope that I can get there. Um, based on what I'm seeing so far, all it takes is one mistake for me to mess up. But I think I can go at least a few more rounds. 280? It doesn't sound out of the question, based on what I'm seeing. Again, but it requires zero mistakes, zero errors, full concentration. And at this point, this is where I start to fall apart. I've been playing Bloomstar Defense 6 all day at this point. And at some point, your mind just sort of gives up. It sort of gives up on Blue Strata 6. It doesn't care anymore. Specifically, when you have to activate your abilities. Because that's the hardest part of it all. If I had, uh... Uh... No P part of the chimps, and I could use powers, this would actually be not too shabby. Um, if I could just, you know, have them all activate all at the same time to throw some sentries down on the bottom down here, life would actually be pretty freaking good. Sadly, we don't live... We don't live in those kind of worlds. We just, we have a himps game going. We can't change it to a him, hymns, hymns. That would be a little, little weird, but you know what? It wouldn't be that ridiculous. I mean, it doesn't really stop us from playing chimps. It just stops Chris from having to suffer. So I don't know if I ever do try to go for another run. Um, if we can't make it 300, I definitely will probably play hymns. It sounds weird, but it's just kind of the way it has to be. Uh, also, one thing we've been doing lately is pretty much every single uh, round, we only get to use these abilities. Uh, uh, this ninja ability once, and this ability twice. That's it. If we use it any more than that, we basically get screwed. Now, at this point, I probably could build something that could insta-kill my Gods, but I actually don't want that. Alright, I know that sounds weird to you guys, but I don't want these my Gods to die. This is how I'm staying alive long enough to get these cooldowns to come back here, so I get to start with them in the next round. If it comes down to it, where we're losing to Zelma Gods or DDDs or something, sure, Blue Master Alchemist or something, sure, why not? I mean, that guy could pro probably make something happen for us. Um, but until that point, I am going to save up my money, and honestly, I'm not that far away. I need another hundred, less, oh, 70,000, well, 80,000, 80,000 dollars to get a Legend of the Night. Less than a hundred. I don't like what I'm seeing at all. Look at round 273. I just broke off from you guys. I thought I was going to have a couple rounds that I was going to be fine. Um, but I gotta admit, this looks really, really bad. Um, maybe we'll get lucky, and the temple will just kind of power through. Everybody's still working together here, but, uh, temple is one of my main towers here, and doing a lot of, uh, uh, specific damage to a bad bloom. But just seeing this many of them, definitely sketch, bro. We gotta hope that there's not very many reinforced mixed in there. There's definitely at least one reinforced mixed in there, and that one's gotta die. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. This one dies, then the rest of them could actually- Ooh, there's one more reinforced there, though. Uh-oh. That means our ability is going to jump to that. Whoa, there's another one over there, too! Dang! All right, well, they're getting to the very, very back here. 273. Don't tell me this is going to be the end. Oh. Well, you know what? I don't know. If we get lucky here with our abilities and everything, we we might be able to pull this off. Just not not this try. Not, not, whoa. Whoa, maybe this try. Maybe this try! One last little bad, come on, yes! Wait, it's still not over. We gotta send him backwards. We gotta send him backwards. Yeah, I think Superstorm has got him. I think we win. I think we got it. Bam, Shazam, and we got our two abilities back. Woo! All right, that was a tight round, but it just shows you how ridiculous things can get and how good we can still be. I thought I was gonna lose, and we powered through. So the lag is getting absolutely ridiculous. You also might notice my money amount here, down to $19,000. A lot of stuff happened in the 70s. A lot of crap happened in the 70s. I was not exactly happy with how, how they went down. I was really hoping that I could push through, get my full-on fifth tier Super Monkey, and feel safe. But sadly, $140,000 was saved up. I needed $30,000 more, and I just could not beat one of the 70s. I don't even remember which one it was. 274, 276, something like that. <clears throat> it was brutal. And then, uh, after that, I had to spend $30,000. I beat another round, and then 279 nearly wiped me out, dude. I spent all of my money five or six times in, like, ten different ways. hundred different ways! Million different ways! No, I just, I, I did. I really tried like five or six times and tried a bunch of different ways of like figuring it out. And don't forget, you're building like a bunch of towers. And then when you lose, you have to restart that over again and over again. So, <clears throat> 279 is finally completed. But if I get another round like 279 in the next 20 rounds, I think I'm straight up doomed. All right, because these things are getting ridiculous. You want to know what saved the day though? 
surprisingly enough, Spirit of the Forest somehow seemed to get me bad damage. Not much, but it somehow did. Uh, that, with a bunch of random ninjas, um, just got me through what I needed to get through. So, obviously, we're going to try to keep up here and see if we can take down around uh, uh, 280 and hopefully a few more in here. But there are no guarantees at this point anymore. 300, it seems like a fever dream. It's it's just it's just too unreachable, probably. All right, guys, I pulled out all the tricks. I did what I could, and this is what I got. 281. That is 32 rounds higher than our previous best. Absolutely stunning. Don't forget, if you guys enjoyed this wonderful, wonderful video, make sure you press that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you do all the Nexus code action you want to do in your life. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.